What's good, everybody? It's the boy KD coming at you again with another One Piece manga chapter review video. First off, I need to apologize for not dropping a video for a chapter review last week. I apologize for that. I had family issues that I needed to take care of last week. Uh, things are, are starting to get smoothed out for me, so I should go back to uh, loading videos on a regular basis for you guys out there. I appreciate your patience and thank you. And again, I'm sorry. But this week we're going to be talking about One Piece manga chapter 936, Sumo Inferno. Now, me personally, I'm not too uh, happy with the chapter. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with it. And honestly, there's a lot of good stuff you know, in it. It just, for me, oddly, it didn't, it didn't hit home for me you know I, I guess i was expecting uh, something a little different from this chapter so i guess i had my expectations set too high but like i said it was still a good chapter though uh and as you see we open up with our cover page with uh kuzan i'm sorry for the slow laps here but we see kuzan uh trying to eat wazoo's noodles uh and I guess subconsciously, knowing how the noodles are prepared, uh, Kuzan actually froze the noodles here. So I think that's actually pretty funny because you actually see the concern in his face, in uh, Kuzan's face. And you see Wazoo, you know, like, really, like, you're just going to do me like that. And it's good to see Wazoo again because uh, we haven't seen him for quite a while now. So it's good seeing that he's actually still around, you know, still in the military and still a cook. So, yeah, that's good to see. Uh, but moving on from this, uh, we actually cut over to Udon. Uh, at the, we cut over to the prison where Luffy and uh, Rizzo and stuff are, are at. And we see Rizzo, he's actually talking to the guy that's been locked up in the, 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 the cell uh, that never been opened, that we never got to see his face. Uh, I can't pronounce the name, so please forgive me, but I think it's like, Kawumatsu or something like that there. Uh, I know I probably butchered the name, but please forgive me. And so they're, they're actually talking, you know, and uh, Kaw, uh, the prisoner in the cell, that's what I'm going to call him, prisoner in the cell, he's actually, he's asking Raza, he's like, it's good to see you uh, when, um, when you know, when will the, the, the fight start, you know. And uh, Raza, you know, informs him that nine days from now, we will be starting, you know, on, on the day of the fire festival, you know, and he asked Rizzo, could you go ahead and let him out? And Rizzo's like, yeah, sure. Just let me know what I need to do. And uh, Kawasamasu let him know that he needed to get the key to open the cell as well as, you know, unchain it from the wall because he's chained to the wall. Here's the reason why we haven't been able to see his face. Okay. Uh, and what ended up happening is the guys that were looking for him, uh, I guess, you know, the gifters or whoever they are, um, the, the, the guards at the, the prison uh, that were looking for Rizzo because, you know, he stole the key. Uh, they, they spotted him because some of the other prisoners, they actually moved the uh, barrel uh, or whatever it is uh, from in front of him. And so they spot him and they're like, you know, get him, you know. And so Rizzo, you know, he pulls his ninja technique off, you know, uh, smoke release, you know, and poof, he disappears. And they like, yo, he really a ninja. So, you know, it was good to see that uh, we will, we do know that he, uh, the guy that's in the cell, Kawasumasu, I think that's how you pronounce it, will be escaping here with Luffy. In which, speaking of Luffy, we cut over to, um, we cut over to uh, Queen who is preparing for what they call contraption concert. So uh, I'm not sure if all the contraption concerts work this way, but uh, from what we get to see, we get to see that uh, it's going to be a sumo match. And the sumo match, uh, one of the, the things about the sumo match is you have to have on this here, uh, uh, if you can see it, 
this uh necklace in which Luffy refers to it as something that the celestial dragons had. It's like it's like the same thing because you can't remove it. But the only difference is this one doesn't explode. If you are knocked out of the circ the sumo circle uh for the ring, uh the necklace automatically engages sharp blades. And you can you can tell that the blades are so sharp and so strong that they're actually able to break the stone pillar. So, you know, Luffy and uh old guy uh, Higurobu, they actually, you know, they're concerned, you know, and so are the other prisoners saying, you know, because apparently this isn't the first time that this happened. Like I said, I'm guessing all the contraption concerts work this way. Um, but yeah, this ring right here is, is actually sharp and it goes around the neck. Um, in which also Queen actually gives Luffy an upper hand and removes the sea prism stone handcuffs from Luffy. In which this makes Luffy extra excited. He said, this is like pretty much freeing me. In which you have to believe that Luffy is trying to do some some unbelievable stuff. Well, I ain't going to say unbelievable, but he definitely going to take Queen by surprise and probably give Queen a good beating uh, just for extra measure. Because um, what happens is once the sumo match starts, um, Queen's subordinates, they actually rush Luffy and Hirogoro and... Luffy just simply knocks them out with his his uh, conqueror's hockey, which okay, that's cool. We know Luffy has strong conqueror's hockey, and you would think that some of these guys would actually be able to stand up because you know if you're part of a Yonko's crew, you know you shouldn't be this weak. But yeah, still they're weak. They they went in there with weapons and and you know it was a whole bunch of them, and they all just got knocked out. Um, so you know. And uh, Luffy had actually asked Queen, if I beat you, will you let us go? So I'm guessing next week we'll probably get to see that, uh, you know, Luffy versus Queen, uh, you know, in a proper uh, go through. Probably won't get the finale of it, but I'm pretty sure we'll actually get to see something of a sort. Next, we cut back over to the flower capital at the bathhouse. Now, X Drake and Hawkins have showed up. Um, give me one moment. Cause I told you to sit down. <sighs> this is Paula Wall, better known as Kenyon. Say hey, Kenyon. Hey. Uh, this is my son. Uh, I told him to sit down, uh, but he he don't he don't want to sit down. He don't want to listen. So he gonna sit here with me for the remainder of the review. All right, guys. Cool. So yeah, like I was saying, uh, Hawkins and X Drake have showed up to the bathhouse to try to find sober mass. Okay, that that's the reason that they're there. Now I'm not sure why they chose the bathhouse, but that's what they chose. They chose the bathhouse as well as they're looking for people with the reverse crescent moon mark on their ankle because they're looking for the supporters of the rebellion. Well, as you know, Nami, Shinobu, and Robin are all there now. I'm pretty sure Shinobu probably has this tattoo on her ankle, but I seriously doubt that Robin and Nami have it. But either way, they're concerned because X Drake and Hawkins will recognize who they are immediately. So Shinobu tells them to get behind her. But Hawkins, he ain't having none of that. He knows that there's somebody hiding behind Shinobu. So Nami steps out and she delivers happiness punch. That's right. Happiness Punch came out. Nami pretty much floored the entire bathhouse with this. Even the women, because as you see here in the picture, there's a woman right there. Okay. She is she is overtaken by Nami's Happiness Punch. Now, look, listen, I'm not too big of a fan of Nami, but I got to admit that, you know, she got it going on. And, you know, uh, too bad that, you know, in the anime, uh, this scene is going to be more uh, clouded and fogged up. You know, uh, than it is right here. So, but you know, hey, the happiness punch took everybody out. It also took out Sober Mass, which everybody know that is Sanji. Sanji got taken out, and they like, who is this? You know, and they like, they realize that it's Sanji immediately because of the thing that he's saying. You know how, uh, you right. know, oh, Nami's uh, breasts. You know, it, they just too magnificent right. for me. I couldn't hold back. Okay, and so, um, so yeah, but. You know, Hawkins and X Drake, well, actually gonna find out the reason X Drake didn't go in because he never went into the bathhouse. 
Well, apparently he has a weakness against seeing naked women as well. Uh, in which actually in this chapter, we actually do get to see a full on naked woman. We actually get to see uh, her breast and everything. So, you know, for those that, you know, like that kind of thing, hey, you know, go check out the chapter. I'm not going to pull the panel up uh, to show you, but, you know, it, it, it is a panel with a woman in it and we actually get to see her breast. OK, but uh, yeah, so uh, they get ready to uh, go in. But Sanji uh, quickly takes off with Shinobu, Nami and Robin and makes an escape flying through the air uh, in which he starts explaining to them that, uh, you know, things are getting hectic because it's more than just the fact that the information has more than likely been leaked. Uh, Law and Beppo in them have also been captured, okay? So I'm trying to figure that out, you know, what's going on with that. I don't even know how that happened, but yeah, they've been captured as well. So it seemed like things are starting to go south uh, for the Rebellion crew, okay? Um, and then we cut over, we actually find Zoro, or not find, but see Zoro, and this is the dude that Zoro was chasing after. This is the thief. Um, this is the one that I guess is the Robin Hood type guy that has been going around spreading goodwill. Because his thing is, in, in which actually I'm not quite sure who's been chasing him. I think Zoro was chasing him. Um, but I'm not sure why Zoro was chasing him because it wasn't like the way that they explained it here in the chapter. I'm not sure. Maybe it was just a translation issue. But, um, the guy was saying that he need to, oh, no, no, no. He took, he took Shusui uh, from Zoro and re returned it back to the grave. That's what happened, actually. And um, Zoro it was chasing him to get it back. That's what happened. And the dude was like, I'm going to take your other two swords as well. And Zoro was like, you know, well, go ahead and try, you know. And watch what happens. And they actually start to clash at the end of the chapter. And that's where we leave off with them clashing on the bridge. Now, like I said, this chapter, uh, it, it moves some things forward. It, it really did. Uh, it wasn't bad. Uh, it, it was pretty good. It just, for me, I was expecting more. I guess I really wanted to see some action go on here in this chapter. But if I have to rate it, in which I'm going to rate it. I got to give it a, a three out of five. I'm going to give this chapter a three out of five. Cause like I said, it's not that it was bad. It was okay. It got the point across. It got the story moving forward. So we got some, uh, got something that looked like it might be some good battles here. So hopefully next week we'll get some closure to those or at least some continuations to those. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's it for this week chapter. Uh, I hope you guys actually go out and uh, read it for yourself so you can, you know, get a full understanding of what happened. Uh, and, you know, if there's anything that you want to discuss, anything that you think that might happen, please leave it down in the comments below. Always remember to like, share, and subscribe to the page. And until next time, Paulo Wall and me, the boy KD, we'll see you next time. Peace. Say peace, Paulo Wall. Peace. <laughs>